Yo, it's your boy Logos, and today I want to talk about something that's kind of related to the Matt the Stallion and Tory Lanez trial, especially with the verdict being that Tory Lanez is guilty and that he may or may not most likely do some like jail time for it. I really want to talk about the response that people has had towards it and how I noticed this over the past few years, but even going back further with the uh, blow up of social media, the blow up of parasocial relationships between like people's fans and the people that they are a fan of, like these celebrities, musicians, or even people that's not as famous in the traditional way, like live streamers, YouTubers, like anybody that has like a public platform and provides some for entertainment. I notice this weird tendency to have this like tribalism where if somebody says something against um, a streamer or a musician or an athlete that you don't like, you tend to get real defensive and you want to like, act like any fight against them is a fight against you. And so you turn into a champion of their cause when there really is no cause to champion. But you're acting like the issue that is going on or the insult that was thrown out or whatever the context may be, like the Mad Style and Tory Lanez thing. You might be on Meg's side or Tory's side. And my point is, people having these parasocial relationships with these celebrities or people they see behind the screen that they really don't know. And these celebrities or people really don't give a fuck about what happens to them. But yet, we, and when I say we, I mean just, you know, the general population, most of the people who make up these people fans were so willing to go to war with each other over these people who don't even know that we exist. But the people that do know we exist, we're willing to go and say horrible things to them, willing to go and fight them, just willing to just entice them with like insults or anything at all, just because they may have a different side of the argument on a topic that has really nothing to influence your actual life or their life or any of our lives. Like once again, the Matt Thee Stallion, Tory Lane saying like, regardless of what happens to Tory, before and after the trial, I didn't give a shit. This is not really going to be affecting my life at all. Like, I don't know anything about the trial because I didn't care to learn about it. I got better stuff to do, in my opinion. I didn't really react at all to the verdict because, once again, I I got better stuff to do than let that man's, like, consequences be my influence on my emotions or where I'm at in life. Like, I'm not saying, like, if you heard the trial verdict one way or the other and you like, damn, that's fucked up or damn, that's... That's what I want. I'm not saying, like, that's bad. But I'm saying, like, getting so emotionally involved in it isn't worthwhile because, like I said, each of us going to go back to our regular lives. And these people who we just see behind the screen, they're going to keep pushing, like I said, any other day. Like, of course, Tori, he got to figure out what he's going to do now that he's, like, guilty. Like, if he's really going to prison over the stuff he did, he got to figure that stuff out. He got a son and everything. But... Once again, I'm not finna stress myself over that. I'm not finna lose sleep over Tory Lanez. I'm not finna lose sleep over Matt Destaglia. I couldn't... When they said that she got shot, I said, damn, that's crazy. That's it. Like, what else am I supposed to do? Like, I'm not gonna get upset. I'm not gonna get angry. I'm not gonna cry. Like, like I don't know that bitch. It's just a random girl that sing on the mic. No different than, like, anybody else. So, like, I don't know her. So, why would I give a damn about what happens to her to the point where I am giving an emotional response to her? Me saying, damn, that's crazy. That that just, that's a blank, neutral response. It's crazy. Because it is crazy. You get shot in the limo and, like, and he might <laughs> and he might have said, damn, bitch. Like, <laughs> that's crazy as hell. But, like, outside of that, like, that's how you're going to get out of me because I don't know her. I don't care to know her. And this ain't going to affect my life. So we need to stop having these parasocial relationships with these people behind the screen and act like they're really our friend or some shit. Or they really, we really know them or they really know us when they don't. They don't give a fuck. If you wasn't a fan or give them money, they would give a fuck even less. So, like, it's it really shouldn't be that important to us as a whole. Because we still got to go and pay our bills. They're not going to help with that. We start going to deal with the relationships that we have in life. They're not going to help with that. They're going to go back to making no money or, you know, Tory Lane trying to figure out what to do in his life. And we're going to do the same. 
I remember when I was in high school, not even that. Let's go like a little bit early, like middle school. My favorite basketball player was and still is LeBron James. And I remember I used to have like this weird parasocial relationship where like I didn't like Kobe Bryant because people would debate between Kobe and LeBron James about who's a GOAT. And like I, I was a fan of LeBron through and through. So whenever somebody, whenever Kobe would do something good, I would like be fuck. Because I'm thinking like this is going to diminish what LeBron doing. Even though like I don't know LeBron. I never seen LeBron in person. I never met LeBron. Never talked to him or anything like that. As I grow older, me, my politics and his politics differ. But back then, I was really like, I really wanted LeBron to like be successful and win and stuff like that. Especially with all the people that was hating on him and and all the stuff that he did with going from Cleveland to Miami. I I had myself emotionally tied to his success, even though his success had nothing to do with me. I was like fucking like fourteen or however young, however young I was. Like what he did in his life in his NBA career got nothing to deal with me. But the way I would react when like he would lose a championship or he would get swept or he would see me like choking the game, it would be like the same thing to me. Like almost like I knew him because like I'm thinking like damn, now I'm gonna be talking shit about LeBron. And I'll be like, yeah, you right. He he fucked up this game. And I get oh I'm thinking like, if LeBron fuck up. That's what Barn fuck up. That's not my fuck up. Logos have nothing to do with that. I'm just a fan of them. But that's it. Once once the game is over, I'm cutting it off. I'm going to either the next basketball game or watching something else. LeBron doesn't have that role in my life. He shouldn't have it. He just entertained on the screen playing the game. And, like, once I got older, I understood that I lost any, like, hatred or any type of weirdness I had towards Kobe because I understood, like, this isn't about Kobe. This is about me being stupidly, I don't know what, insecure because I'm a fan of LeBron. I think Kobe's greatness is so great that it's actually a threat to LeBron. But, like, who get, for me, who gives a fuck if it's a threat to LeBron? I'm not getting a check off of his Nike um, money. I'm not getting anything from what LeBron do in the NBA or outside of that. So why should I give a shit that much? Like, I want him to be good because he's my favorite player. But, like, if if he goes 0-82, it's going to be like, damn. I ain't, I ain't know y'all going to be that shitty. But, like, that's it. It's not going to be like, fuck. Like, I got to worry about these niggas so next year I got to deal with them talking shit. Like, if if a motherfucker talking shit, I could just laugh. Or if I don't want to laugh, I could just walk away and not have the conversation. Like, these motherfuckers don't know us. We don't know them. We just know it through a screen and through their art. And just try to keep it at that because being angry at each other and, you know, acting like one person getting the win is a win for you is pretty weird. Because when they do lose, you're going to act like it's a loss for you. And if your emotions can't be controlled, you might try to lash out at people because you're mad because your favorite celebrity took an L. Like, that, that makes no sense. We need to stop giving them so much time and money. And we can invest that time and money in ourselves. Shoot, that's part of the reason why we're doing the podcast. So me and uh, we don't have to talk shit to people online about serious topics. Like, what's the point? We're just yelling into the darkness. That's why we made this YouTube channel. Like, to have, like, important conversations. And I feel like this is one of them. And it's not just a random thing. I know this stuff over years and years before before social media, well, at the start of social media, when I used to watch Twitch, before it was even Twitch in and of itself, it was called Justin.TV. And I, you, could, you could watch, like, the craziest shit. You could watch, like, full South Park and Family Guy episodes being live streamed. Like, bat to bat to bat, no commercials on Justin.TV. And that shit was amazing. There was, like, almost zero moderation. You could do almost anything you want, but it was hella drama and there was hella bullshit. You know, the DDoS scene and all this stuff like that because weirdos be online and weirdos say because I watch you online. I know you personally. And when one streamer gets into some heated shit with another one, they want to go into their chat and try to like flood it with bullshit and call, call them out and like say nasty stuff to them because they feel like they got to defend their stream. I'm like, bro, it's not that deep. Enjoy the entertainment. You're being a psycho. It's not just like social media and like celebrities. It is anything in of itself where people get attached to people they don't know. And they're willing to fight and yell and argue and make a fool of themselves and try to make a fool of others to like further that 
person's career or name or reputation. I don't know. It just it just weird to me. I'm glad I, w- I got over it when I was younger. And I'm not saying that ag- arrogantly. I'm just saying my first experience with it was with Kobe. And then as I got older, I realized it's not about Kobe. It's about me being stupid. I, LeBron says it's got nothing to do with me. Any celebrity lies got nothing to do with us. It's your boy Logos. And I'll see you on that song.